This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation, specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e-learning to instructor-led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at using Active Directory sites and services to create and configure sites and subnets. Now, as we know, these are part of the physical infrastructure in Active Directory, and they represent physical locations. They're used to control replication and login traffic. Sites and Services is the primary tool that we'll use, and so let's start by opening that up. In the Start menu in your Administrative Tools, you'll find Active Directory Sites and Services. You open that up, we're going to see just the default setup uh, within AD, and that's that we do have a single site by default. The sites would be listed here in the Sites container. Default first site name is the default site. Okay, now we can rename that and we probably will want to. But first things first, let's expand that and see that we have three different servers. One is a branch office uh, domain controller, a read-only domain controller, and then our two domain controllers. Now, these are domain controllers for different domains, but in the physical infrastructure, they are in the same site. That's why we say the physical and the logical don't really have anything to do with one another. Now, we're going to use a scenario where we have a couple of different locations. Okay, a Tampa location, a Chicago location. We'll create sites for each. So first things first, I'm going to go and create subnet objects. Remember, these are logical representations of physical network segments that we have. Uh, and so what I can do is the uh, IP address that is used on that network, 10, 0, slash 8. Okay, that's your typical 10 dot address, and that's the one that's used on that network, and then we link it to a specific site. Okay, now that's the actual subnet. Uh, if you want, you can provide a better description, and we can also provide a location. So we'll say that this is the Chicago site, main subnet in Chicago. Okay, we don't have to do that. It does look like we still have the Oh, no, it's showing me more. Okay, so a 10 dot address there, and then over at uh, the Tampa location, we're using 192.168.10 and a slash 24. Okay, now, right now, we're associating these both with the same site, and that's okay. Uh, we'll go to the properties of that one, main subnet Tampa, and the location will be Tampa. And we can carry these locations a little bit further, and again, we don't have to do that. Now, our next step will be to create an additional site. So right-click Sites Container, create a new site. We're going to call this the Chicago site. Connect it to the default IP site link, which is the default site link. And go, yes, it's just basically telling me what other things I need to do. So now I'm going to go back into the subnets container and my 10 dot, which is the main subnet in Chicago, I'm going to now associate with the Chicago site. Okay, at this point, login traffic has now been controlled. Now, I want to clean up a little bit, so I'm going to rename the default first site name to Tampa, just so it all makes sense. I'm also going to go to Inner Site Transports, IP, and instead of default IP site link, I'm going to rename that to Tampa, Chicago. And that way, if we create additional site links in the future, uh, we're, we, we're clear on where things are at. All right, so at this point, though, we still have all our servers in the Chicago uh, site. Actually, they're all, the, all the servers are in the Tampa site, and we need to move servers. So the servers that are actually in the Chicago location can then just be dragged and dropped into that location. Now, it is key that you are doing this correctly because it will change how replication happens. But it is simply just a drag and drop that moves these uh, domain controllers. So now I have my Tampa site with one server. I have my Chicago site with two additional servers. I have my subnets that are associated with a specific site. Okay? And so that's really the process for creating sites, for configuring those sites. 
um, setting up subnet objects so that they're associated with the site and linking sites together with site links. And so in this first demonstration, we just took a look at uh, those different operations that we need to begin setting up and controlling the physical infrastructure in Active Directory.